My name is Christopher Javier Larga Espada, and there's a story that I want to tell about a journey that I could have never imagined. Pieces of a civil conflict from a nation that runs through my blood, which I hope to touch on and intertwine into that story because they help make up the intangible destinations that the journey is still bringing me to. A new reality that I was able to forge due to inspirations, ideas, and love that I found through service learning, and specifically so many beautiful people who I may never see again, but will definitely never forget. This past summer, I was able to spend a total of 70 days in Guatemala, St. Vincent, in an island called Bequia, working in hospitals and clinics repairing medical devices. As a class assignment, a graduate student named Patrick Link, who is also a former U.S. Army Special Forces medic ranked Staff Sergeant E6, put together a class syllabus that eventually turned into a reality. Patrick was able to connect multiple nonprofits with engineering students in order to learn while also serving a genuine need in public health. A partnership with the segment of the Central Virginia Goodwill, known as the Free Foundation, allowed for students to repair motorized wheelchairs that went to families who otherwise couldn't afford to pay thousands of dollars for one. And a partnership with a nonprofit organization called World Pediatric Project sent myself and two senior engineers to spend a week with the maintenance department of the Milton Cato Hospital in St. Vincent to work on medical devices. The team services over 39 hospitals and clinics through every single island on this picture. <laughs> they will fix anything from ceiling and sewage leaks to automobiles and surgical devices. The team there is so beautiful, man. <laughs> and they be hustling like, yo, I spent four hours with this man, Sil, who is by the way, one of the most respectable and knowledgeable people that I've ever encountered in my entire life four hours on an island called Bequia, where he is from. And within that time, we fixed and sterilized two autoclaves, which sterilizes medical equipment, diagnosed a malfunctioning dryer for a maternity ward, and also fixed his homie's car. <laughs> I was able to go to St. Vincent with the hopes to make an impact because three weeks prior to the program, I just finished a two month long stay in Guatemala where I had worked as a clinical engineer in two departments called Quetzaltenango and Retauleu, known as Shela and Reu by the locals, along with 13 other participants from Mexico, El Salvador, Australia, and the United States. I was a participant in the Summer Institute offered by a nonprofit organization called Engineering World Health. Engineering World Health is dedicated to working in hospitals and clinics across Africa, Asia, and Latin America to repair and maintain medical equipment. We were divided into three teams and spent a total of two months in four departments of Guatemala. And during our time there, we fixed 67 medical devices estimated to be worth a total of 134,000 US dollars. And also, if I may, I'm going to take a little tangent. Going to Guatemala was not the original plan. We were originally supposed to have the Sunmer Institute in Nicaragua. However, due to the events that have taken place in Nicaragua over the past couple of months, the program was unexpectedly shifted to Guatemala just two weeks before the start date. The events began on April 18th and were the result of a radical adjustment to Social Security benefits carried out by President Daniel Ortega, which ultimately decreased citizens' benefits while increasing their taxes. The citizens responded to the change by taking action in the streets. Within the first week of protests, sources claim about 30 to 50 people were killed. Their actions caused the legislation to be scrapped, however, the people remained and still do remain fighting until they can see President Ortega step down from power. The events are collectively being considered as one of the biggest 
and deadliest civil conflicts in Nicaragua since the Sandinista Revolution, which lasted 20 years and ended in just 1990. The government's official death toll as of September 2018 was 198. However, I saw reports ranging from 200 to 500 human souls. <laughs> My father's from Nicaragua, Managua, Nicaragua to be exact. He passed when I was a baby and my family in VA ain't that close with the family I got over there. So I initially saw this trip as an opportunity to work while also exploring a side of myself that I may have never known. I wish I could explain how much my time in these subdeveloped countries helped develop my mind and spirit in ways academia, any career or any amount of monetary wealth could ever do. Whether it was in Guatemala or St. Vincent, I was the one being schooled at all times. I wish I could explain how beautiful these places and their people truly are. Man. However, regardless of everything that has taken place, all of the events that have taken course throughout this journey in Guatemala, St. Vincent, and Bequia can be referred to as service learning. Service learning often has a stereotype associated with it. It is usually like thought of that we are the ones servicing them. However, I want to paint the picture that that is completely backwards. I pray that in the future, engineering institutions can do all that they can in order to put students in positions where they can engage in service learning. Them books can never help me take away what I am still taking away from this long journey. The experiences and guidance that we receive will develop us and the US society in more ways than academia can ever dream to do on its own, regardless if it's overseas or not. And as a student, being involved in these tangible projects allowed me to keep alive inspirations that the classroom environment can otherwise kill on its own. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here.